What's up guys, welcome back to another twin motion video. In this video, we're going to look at using a different file format to export, which is a bit interesting, but it became available to us whenever we got 2022.2 preview one. So yeah, it's still preview, but we have it nonetheless. So I would highly recommend that you not only update twin motion to the latest, but also check out my video for 2022.2 preview one. There's a decent amount there. It's some good stuff, but we talk, we at least introduce the file format, which is exr dot exr or the format called open exr. All right. But before we get into it, if at any point in this video, you happen to learn something, please like the video it really helps me out a lot. Okay. Getting into it now. So I'm in just this basic lake house scene and I've made a new image. This ships with twin motion. So this is nothing fantastic. Uh, with this, I have a, a new image made, uh, my own settings, my own kind of everything. So basically this is my own shot. It's not one that was uh, baked in with this particular file. But what I want to show you first is the fact that if I come into the export tab here and I go to more, if I were to export an image, I can choose all of this information. And I've looked over, I've gone over and made videos over these different types of elements we can look at, but particularly with format, we were only limited to PNG and JPEG previously, but now we have EXR, which is really cool. So first, what is EXR? Well, uh, it's hard to explain uh, simply, but I, I wanna simplify it to the best of my ability and say, if you're familiar with HDRI, high dynamic range, like it, it is basically a smarter version of a PNG or JPEG file because it has more data or more depth. You know, the standard file that we export is going to have eight bits of depth, which means there's only so much data that you, you can put in there versus EXR. It's going to have all of basically all of the lighting information that you would want. And that is typically around 32 bits, which is great. So that in of itself is basically why we want to start using the EXR format. But the unfortunate part about EXR is that it's not widely used. It's not widely basically available or widely viewable even um, because you might need a particular uh, program to view EXR files. And so we don't want to deal with that. So um, we're really going to work with just an extra couple of steps when it comes to exporting here to get not only a higher quality image, but to get it back to a PNG or a JPEG or something else that you want. Uh, to get it pretty close to the quality that an EXR type export would have. Okay, so, all right. All of that to say, I'm taking this image. I'm not going to do anything else into InMotion, actually, because I've gone to the trouble of already exporting a PNG of this particular image and as well as an EXR. So, but we do want to go to Photoshop, and this is where everything is going to happen. So with Photoshop, you can see here, I've got my image it's PNG. It's great. It's good. You know, really, I don't have any uh, bad things to say about it, but I do want to show you a couple things. So actually first, let's go ahead and open our EXR. And we want to make sure that we use this and open this as an alpha channel because the alpha channel is going to have all of our lighting data that we want to have. So that's going to be the first thing we want to make sure we open it with that. So with this, you can clearly see that it is a little oversaturated. We're, we can easily deal with that later. That's not a huge deal. But I want to show you the differences in besides the look, I want to show you the differences in the actual data. And we can find this if I come over here to the PNG, I can go to image mode, and I can see ooh, eight bits, basically eight bits per channel. That's the level or the amount of data that we can put uh, into or that that's already within this image. And so if I go to this EXR, we can see image mode, and then, ooh, look at that, 32 bits. So yeah, there's a lot more data, a lot more information in here versus the PNG. That's we immediately what that tells me. So also you can see these numbers up here. Uh, we've got an eight and a 32 after each of these uh, different file names. And that's just telling us that it happens to be eight bit, bit versus 32. Easy stuff, not a big deal right now, uh, but we will get to dealing with that. So. Uh, let's go to the PNG, and I, I, I particularly made this a bit bright in some areas to show you what would ultimately happen. So there's a couple things I'm going to show. We're going to go to Window, and I want to make sure to see the histogram. And if you're not familiar with the histogram, 
it's basically displaying all the data that is within the image and you know where that data is distributed on a spectrum you know from light to dark from this or that and once you get to some of the ends you start losing some data and you get they're basically clipped out and that, that means you you don't have data there and so what i want to do is actually start to adjust some things here and let's go into my exposure and i'm just going to bring the exposure up a lot and you can see what happens with the, our histogram we're really starting to lose a lot of data on the right side but you can see what happens here is a lot of this information is it just gets blown out and even if i bring this down you know i do have more data here that i can see um, but really it's a lot of it is lost really quickly now let's hide this exposure and i want to do the same thing here but uh, because this is an exr uh, we don't necessarily want to use uh, the basic adjustments they're not necessarily meant for this so what i'm going to do is go to image adjustments and then hdr toning because we're dealing with an hdr image at this point and so uh, i don't necessarily want to use a particular method uh, i do just want to uh, play with the exposure in gamma so moving this over here if i start to move the exposure up you know obviously it gets blown out very quickly but I really want to show you what happens when the exposure goes down and I'm, I'll go back to the PNG. So you can see here, look at this. I'm actually not losing data. This, this is, um, and not, not necessarily losing data, but I'm not losing quality either. You can see it, Yeah, it gets darker, but I'm maintaining a, a level of light that is basically consistent throughout the image based on what I'm doing to it. If it's, um, or like overexposed or underexposed, I'm not necessarily losing um, any information because it's becoming blown out or something like that so i'm going to cancel that but i'm going to come back here and play with the exposure again but bring it down i want to show you what happens when i bring this exposure down uh, because it is very different than what we were just seeing with the hdr tony so bringing this down you can see yeah i do like it gets to the point where uh, it looks unnaturally light still like it, it's not like the lights are dimming uh, but I'm seeing an even quality of lighting. I'm actually just, it just becomes darker and I have the same level of highlights and bright brightness to it, um, which that's totally fine. It's just the difference between an 8-bit versus 32-bit image. Okay, so I wanted to look at this specific example and it's just a different shot in the lake house. Uh, as a more harsh <laughs> example, so what I have here is the same image, but just, a PNG and EXR, same kind of deal, but I've really boosted the exposure, the sun, kind of everything to really, in a way, kind of blow out uh, the scene to just to show you the difference between a PNG and EXR, basically the, the depth of the data that is within each file format. So in the PNG here, again, we're going to come over to the adjustments and the brightness, and I just wanna bring this down. I'm gonna bring it down a lot. And so obviously this is what we might have to do to let's say utilize this image to some degree. And so, yeah, I forgetting the saturation, I do need to desaturate this a bit, but besides that, I've already you know, brought the brightness down as far as I can. Let's even if I duplicate this, I can see, all right, here are some of my problem areas and I'm actually gonna hide that so we could look at more of a natural looking shot. Um, but when I zoom in here, you could see clearly there is just a complete loss of data. This is completely blown out. There's there's nothing that I can do here to help this, help these basically dead pixels, I guess uh, you could call them when it comes to the image. And so if I were to we look at the original image, yeah, it's kind of blown out and we could see there's a ton of data here on the end that is on the higher side and you know basically brighter and whiter. Um, if I were to bring this down, bring this back, the the brightness, bringing the brightness down, I can see, yeah, I have lost a ton of information when it comes to everything on the higher end. And so everything on the higher end here is just kind of lost, lost data. So in contrast to that, let's look at an EXR version. So yes, this also is very blown out. Now we will see if this works like I think it will. And, and uh, because it's an EXR, the way I think this ought to work is that it will literally just bring the light levels down to a usable level while maintaining all of my, you know, usable pixels, basically keeping them all usable. And I'm not actually losing data. Okay. So again, we'll come over to image 
adjustments and then HDR toning. Now, I don't want any of this at all, but immediately you can see it's a bit better, but I want to go to my exposure, uh, my exposure and gamma right here. So let's go ahead and start bringing my exposure down. Okay. Look at this. So if I bring this, if I continue to bring this down, you remember these specific pixels here on the edge of the frame, they were gone. They were lost. I, I was basically stuck with that, that not only color, but the fact that it was dead information. There's nothing there. I can't really alter it because it was blown out. There was no data there to alter. You could see that clearly it's there and I can, if I wanted to, I can use this as you know a separate layer to overlay and whatever. And so I could maintain this data. Now I don't need to bring it down that far, but you could see where it was. It was very blown out before and bringing this down here, I could see, woo, it's very quickly usable data. The, the difference between something that I started with here versus usable data there. And obviously if I uh, alter the gamma, this is going to show us <laughs> what we did not have access to when it comes to the PNG. It's just amazing how far I can take this, uh, based on where we started, which was a completely blown out and typically lost data. And the cool thing about this is if you are a photographer, this applies all the same. If you, uh, take an HDR image, you're going to have more access to the data that might be more likely to be blown out if you're working just in an 8-bit or PNG JPEG default format. So this is really interesting, and I, I like this a lot because it does give you an idea of what to use. So very cool. So let's go back to our image and finish that up. Okay, so what, really, what's the whole point here? Well, uh, we want to make sure that we get the amount of data and the light data that we want out of here. And we want to maintain that, of course. Um, but besides that, we do want to get this file format, EXR format, into a, let's say, more usable, uh, shareable type of format. And that's probably going to be a PNG, something like that, because it's a lesser file size for the maximum quality. And I would still like PNGs all the time. And so I would regularly use those, but now that we have the ability to use the XR, I'm typically going to go through this type of a workflow. So what will our workflow actually look like? So the workflow would look something kind of like this. I, I want to take this image and it, it can't be a 32 bit uh, because it's, it's not going to, I'm not gonna be able to export it what I, the way I want it to. And so I need to take that down to an eight bit. Basically this is, it's going to do it for me. Um, but I want to do that myself because I have more control over it that way. So let's go ahead and go to image mode and just simply change this to eight bit. Now you can do 16 or whatever you want to do, but you'll see immediately what happens. And we're going to, it's going to bring up this HDR toning. And obviously this looks terrible and I don't like doing it this way because I want to be able to change, basically change the quality, keep as much data when it comes to the HDR side as possible. And so we can achieve that with a method that is just highlight compression. You can see this looks pretty consistent to the way that it did before we ended up changing the from 32 bit to eight bit. Like I'm losing some of the highlights, but what it's doing is bringing all the highlights down a bit. Um, so everything's kind of falling in a nice place in the histogram. And I'll show you that here in a second. So this is gonna be the best option to bring it to eight bit that's you know, not only a smaller file format, but it's easier to use and you can export that as a PNG. So I can press okay here. And at this point I'm at eight bit. I can do everything that I would normally do to a PNG image. So I probably want to change some of the saturation, but I don't want to actually uh, deal with the saturation. I want to change the vibrance. And so, cause we want to get basically to the level of saturation that we have in the PNG, because that's what we're used to seeing. But uh, we can change it here. So obviously we know what saturation does. It brings everything down. And while this might be applicable, I don't like using that. I like using the vibrance. And in some cases you might want to bring the vibrance up depending on the shot uh, or down. In this case, I want to bring it down. And so what the vibrance will do is affect only the primary colors, the blue, red, and yellow and surrounding colors around that to the to the degree that they're still considered the primary colors. Um, so when I bring the vibrance down, I'm not losing all my saturation. Uh, but what we can see is that it becomes more of what we'd expect. And, you know, maybe it's minus 35. I don't know, whatever it is. Um, 
there's also a balance uh, between increasing the saturation, lowering the vibrance, or vice versa, doing the exact same thing just like this. Uh, it, it's however you want to play with it. There's a level of contrast that you get whenever you deal with changing both at the same time. I don't know. This is up to you, but you, you can make it look like the way you want to. So I like this a little more. Uh, I, that's perfectly fine. And at this point, yeah, we can actually still play with some of the levels. And so here we can see when it comes to the levels, this is my histogram, like just like what we saw before. There's my histogram but with colors. Uh, the levels is only going to affect, you know, blacks and whites. So what I can see here is that it quickly goes to black. Basically, if I bring this over here, I, I'm I'm going to get the, the darks as being darker very quickly because you can see everything is a, a little too balanced in a sense that there's not enough contrast. So I can do this two ways, of course. I can hide the levels, come over here and go to brightness and contrast and just jack up the contrast. I do get that, but that actually affects the levels kind of on both ends. So I imagine I bring some of the, the blacks down and then some of the whites up. This is exactly what the contrast is gonna do here. Um, but I wanna have more control over that, so I don't want to use that. So let's look specifically at the levels. I want to I want some of these blacks that are kind of on the edge, um, in the shadow and all that, to be more close to 100% black. And so I can see bringing this up to, if I bring this all the way to the highest level here, those, everything will be just straight black. And I don't want that. That's too much. So I want to bring it to the point where I'm just starting to get some of this information uh, all the way on the edge of black. So I have some some parts of my scene that are 100% black. And then the same thing with the whites. You know, there's a there's a debate that I could bring it all the way over here. I don't want to do that necessarily, but bringing this in, you can clearly see, I, yeah, it gets brighter and it gets too bright very quickly. So I probably just want to bring it up to this point. So I like this a lot. And if we look at the, uh, the difference between this and the PNG, obviously let's hide that, but this is, it's, it looks good because there's a lot of contrast and the saturation's nice, but this, it, it's a more balanced shot. And you can see I actually have more light that's just ambient. And that's just kind of the nature of this type. So obviously, if you don't like this or if it's, you know, too orange or whatever it might be, definitely play with those hue and saturation values. You know, you could do this here. It's very simple to, to make this look a little more blue than orange, something like that. So I like this a lot and you can clearly see now with this, let's say, okay, we're good. I'm going to bring some of the exposure down and compare this to my PNG just to see the difference. So exposure here, if I bring some of this exposure down, you'll notice because we're in 8-bit again, it's going to bring everything down and keep the light basically static. We're just, <laughs> it becomes a darker image as opposed to really affecting the light. So that's a, a great way of being able to use an EXR. Um, we could simply bring in the EXR and immediately export to PNG. We could do that kind of thing, but just know you're going to have to deal with that HDR toning and how you deal with that and how you compress that is, is really up to you. So at this point, maybe I do want to bring uh, a little bit of contrast, like harder contrast into it, like exactly. And just like that, very simple. I like it. So you can see where we were with the PNG. Um, when you look at this and compare them both, it's it's they're very similar yet quite different in that uh, the first one looks more cartoony than I would have necessarily liked, whereas the second one I really feel that this is a balance, more of a balanced look. While you can debate some of the colors being uh, completely accurate or not, that's up to you. We can deal with that later. There's probably a different shot I could use that would not have that much, uh, but Hey, you know, I like it a lot. So let me know what you think of the EXR format. If it's something you might want to use, I like it a lot because I feel more confident in the light levels that I see and with the lighting performance that I can ultimately achieve out of that file format. So I'm going to export this because I'm happy with this. It looks good. And I will see you in the next video. Let me know what you think of the EXR in the comments below. And obviously if you learned something, please like the video helps me out quite a lot. Also consider subscribing because that does as well. So again, that will do it for this video. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next twin motion video. Thanks for watching.